All right, so let's do this through an example. So we got uh, the modulus is 10 times 10 to the sixth PSI, and the moment of inertia of 10,000 inches to the fourth power. Uh, one kip per inch uh, from points A to B, and we got 100 uh, kips applied right at the middle between B and C, 50 inches uh, at center there versus the 100 inches crossed and 200 inches here between A and B. And we want to figure out what are the deflections at points B and point C and the reactions, the reaction forces too. All right. So if we look at the solution, we want to, first of all, we got to break the sucker up. We got to discretize this thing. Uh, so we're going to have one element between one and two and another element between nodes two and three. All right. So put a node at point B to simplify the load matrix because we want to find the, the, the deflection at node two. So we might as well do it right there. And that's where the forces change as well. The other thing to keep in mind is we want to break these elements such that they match the loading conditions available in the table we just looked at. All right, so again, if we go back to that table whoop, right here, right? If hopefully we can break it up so it matches the things in here so we can grab the values right off here and use these uh, readily within our, our uh, matrix. All right, so there we go. All right, so the form uh, of the beam element stiffness matrix from before is this. So it's in generic form for any beam. For any beam element. All right, so for element one, if we plug in our modulus and our moment of inertia and the length, we come up with, all right, this is our values. And you can see here, again, element one is between nodes one and node two. So here we got our indices. We got uh, node one, lateral displacement, node one, uh, rotation, node two, lateral displacement, node two, rotation. And you can kind of put those across the top as well. So let's go see that in, in uh, MATLAB, and then I'll come back here. All right. So in MATLAB here, you got to make sure you read this note here at the top. So this is, again, this is in our um, example, uh, empty example here. The reason for not including units. So right here, I don't have any units like I did last time with the uh, axial members or with the, I guess the last time I did it was with the, um, with the trusses. So we're not including units because the stiffness matrix for beams has both displacement, the lateral displacement, and rotation aspects. That's two different unit systems, right? Displacements in length and rotations in radians. So therefore, the units are not consistent throughout the entire matrix. And this lack of consistency becomes a problem when multiplying the stiffness matrix by the load matrix, you know, where the load matrix is force versus uh, the different types of units in the K matrix. So here, we're just going to leave off units. So modulus doesn't have units. Um, load inertia doesn't have any units. So, Think of this almost like ANSYS, right? When we put stuff in ANSYS, there's no units displayed. So we had to be very consistent in how we, we, we implemented things here. So same deal now with MathCAD, analyzing beams. Got to be consistent. Got to be careful with, with our applying our loads here. All right, so what I got here is my uh, modulus, my motor inertia. Here's my distributed load. So uh, one kip per inch. And my point load of was 100 kips. All right. So here's my generic stiffness matrix. Let me close this up here. Here's my generic stiffness matrix for beams. So EI over L cubed. All right. So E, I, and L. So the reason I did this is because now I can plug in any E, any I, and any L. So even if E would change, I can, I can plug it in and solve for that. All right. So let's see. For element one, we got a length of 200. All right. We're defining that as 200 inches. Uh, and length one is... Uh, the overall length that I just defined. So let's come down here. So we got um, E is the E I def defined at top. I is the I defined at top, and L is going to be the most recent L defined. So right in here, maybe just change that to L1. Let's do that. All right, and go ahead and hit equals on that. All right, so 1 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, and 2. Make sure we're lined up with what we got. Uh, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, and 2. Um, we got 15 times 10 to the 6th. See so we got here. So we got 15 times 10 to the sixth. If we move one to the to the right, we'd have 10 to the sixth. All right, that looks good. And this one, yeah, 10 to the sixth, we move in the, the other direction. So that looks good. All right. So we're lined up there. Let's look at element two. All right. So length is changed here, and plugging in everything else is the same inside here. So we come up with 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2,
we're showing our six here probably in our in our math CAD and a four there. So let's see what we get there for element two. So it's 100 in length. And we got L2 there. So let's plug in L2 here. And just equals. Yep, so 1.26 and 4. That looks like that should be good. All right. So now we're going to assemble a total stiffness matrix. So remember that. Actually, let me go back one here. So element 2 is between nodes 2 and node 3. Right, and it has its own um, information that we have about the lateral deflection rotation at node 2, lateral deflection rotation at node 3. All right, so as we load these into the total stiffness matrix, we got to get element 1 up here with just nodes 1 and 2, and element 2 needs to be here with elements 2 and 3. So the overlap there is obviously at node 2, which they both share. All right, so let's do that here. All right. So we had to put a, create together our trans matrix to get it into that form. And uh, going back here, whoops, going back to the slideshow here, we got um, this, out of the way. Um, this is a six by six. All right, and our beam matrices are four by four. So we've got to get from a four by four to a six by six. All right, so to do that, we're going to have to put our matrix and we're going to do a uh, six by four and for element one we want to move nodes uh, one and node two and node one is node i and node two is node j so that's why we're putting the ones where we have them in the first two columns and then the ones in the second two columns are in node two so fill in zeros Looks good there. All right, let's see what this guy comes out to. Hopefully it's not too crazy. Yeah, it gets off the page a little bit. All right, so we got zeros down here. That looks good there. And let me undo that so I can get back to page view a little bit cleaner. There we go. And I'll do the same thing here. So let's get that up to a 6 by 4. And now we're at node 2 is node I. And node J node 3, so we got ones there. So we're putting zeros in the other ones. Other uh, spots there. DCs. Alright. So it fills out. All right. So what I have there is after I've created the two um, into the system form of the matrix, so from the element form to the system form, from the 4x4 four four to the 6x6, six six, so this guy adds it up automatically for me. So I'm adding those two together. And it should here in the crossover 1.35 and a 4.5 and a 6. So let me see if we got that at one point. Oh, one more slide here. 1.35, 4.5, and 6. And that's all times 10 to 6. And these ones in the math cat are uh, different powers there. All right. So let's slide down here. We got forces coming up. So let's look at our forces here. So to the um, to create the element load matrices, we got to go back to the table, and I'll let you go ahead and do that um, again. The links below for shortcuts. But if we have a distributed load, and actually that's what we just we saw for, right? We have the um, negative transverse load, so omega L over two negative negative y direction, uh, negative uh, rotation that's being applied there, um, or negative moment, I guess in this case. Um, you get negative transverse force at node J, in this case node 2, and positive moment being applied at uh, node 2 as well. All right, so plugging in for omega and L, so omega being 1 uh, kip per inch and L being the 200 inches, we come up with uh, 100, 3,333, um, and 103,333 at the node J. All right, for node uh, element two, excuse me, at element two, we have a point load halfway between the two end nodes, between nodes two and three. So in that case, the um, lateral loading is uh, P over two. I think I might have said displacement over here. I meant loading. Sorry about that. Uh, for the moment here, we got a negative moment, uh, PL over eight. Again, P is the, the value of the point load. Um, negative P over two at node three and PL over eight for uh, node three. All right, so substituting in there for our P's and our L's, 
All right, we come up with this. All right, so let's see if we get that in MathCAD. All right, so we got the omega and L1s all there. So equals, that looks good. And we got this for the P, that looks good as well. All right, so we got the uh, global force. We're gonna bring those together. All right, so this is a four by one. And this is a four by one, so we need to get it into a six by one. So we're gonna apply those trans matrix we already made up top, and that gets it all ready in that form. And then we can easily add those together right there. All right, so that looks good. So let's see that here in the PowerPoint. All right, so there's the adding together uh, at node two where they share between the two. And then the final results there of negative 150 and uh, 2 million. Let's see what we got here. Yep. So 1.5 and then 2 million here. All right, that looks good. All right, so here's the global matrix function. We're putting it all together here. So we got our stiffness matrix, our global coordinate system matrix. Uh, here are all our displacements, excuse me, and rotations. And there's our overall force function. So now we got to apply some boundary conditions. All right, so the boundary conditions here, uh, again, go back to the, the, the picture we got, but we have the... Uh, connected to a wall essentially at node one. So there's no lateral displacement, no rotation. So we got uh, zero for U11 and zero for U12. And then we had a rolling um, connection going on at node three. So we had no uh, lateral displacement there as well. So in that case, we're knocking out the first row and column, knocking out the second row and column, and we got to knock out the fifth row and column. All right, so if you remember how to do that in MathCAD, so we'll come down to doing boundary conditions. All right, so we're knocking out three out of a three by, or a six by six, or a six by one. So in either case, we gotta go down, go from a uh, six something to a three something. So we're gonna put in here uh, six by three. Now, what do we wanna keep? And we wanna knock out uh, one, 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 two, and we wanna knock out one, uh, three, one. So we wanna keep two, one, all right, and we want to keep 2, 2. We don't want to keep 3, 1. We want to keep 3, 2. So that's where we're going to put the 1s. All right. So that's where we reduce down to. So let's see if we got that. So we got 1.35, 45, and 6,000. 1.35, 4.5, and 6,000. And just to note here, I'm not picking these out because they're anything special. It's just I'm picking out a few as opposed to looking at the whole matrix. Um, for sake of time, if you want to, you know, probably best to look at the whole thing to make sure everything's going uh, right. But once you do the setup well in the beginning, you should be good the rest of the way. So it's the key things that first bit of setup because um, the rest of the way is, is just stripping away rows and columns and putting them back in and obviously solving the process. All right, so we also need to do that to our uh, load matrix. All right, so that was done down here. I had that one set up. So that's good there. And let's solve this guy. All right, so solving, we got the, the uh, displacement there. I've added in the, the uh, units there. So negative 0.4275 inches there at node two. Um, the rotation there, 0 0.001574 radians. And the rotation at node three, 0 0.0059. 38 radians. Right, so let's check that out here. So there's our radians, and this one is our inches. Again, having to remember that the units are based on what we used earlier on because we obviously don't have any units showing here with our matrices because of inches and radians. All right. So if we want to find the support in nodal reactions, we need to get back into the form so we can take our uh, overall forces applied with our just solve for displacements with our stiffness matrix. All right. And let's, whoops, sorry, let's go back here. So plug those all in and we can solve the reaction forces are here. So reaction force of node one, 188 kips. And the moment there, 113,200 kips per inch and then 112 kips at the reaction force of node three. So we uh, basically we can blow up our um, displacements, getting them back into the six by one form, solving for the reaction forces. And just got to watch out here, we're going to, because there's some small values that 
that keeps in um, through its calculations. These are essentially zero. So 10, uh, 10 to the minus 11, minus 9, minus 9, take those to be zero. So we got 1.877, 1.13, 1 and 1.12. Uh, so let's see what we got there. So 1.88, 1.13, 1.12. All right, that looks good. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, presentation. If you have any questions about the FE formulation for beams, uh, let me know. Uh, again, there's a lot of key points here is when we break up our beam, make sure we can get the loadings that are in that, that table. And let me see if actually I can find it real quick for you here to finish it out. Uh, Uh, there we go. So we'll go back up to our table here. So yeah, if you can get the equivalent loadings, then you can have your nodes at uh, one end or the other of a distributed load, or one end or the other of a point load, or one end or the other of a distributed uh, gradual changing load. All right, and that'll help you out a lot as you develop your develop your formulation. All right. So again, any questions below in the notes, and uh, hope to see you guys later in the next uh, presentation. Thanks.